The day's the 14th of April, the year of our Lord, 1885. A day I will hold dear until my last. <sighs> I have done and spent 30 years of my life in Purgatory Point. My ma brought me out here when I was but 10 years young. She hoped to give us a chance at a new life. There are good folk here in Purgatory Point. And sure, sometimes they get a little rowdy, and maybe we stray too far from heaven's gaze, but uh, what do you expect from a frontier mining town? Something happened to one of the miners. Clive Farnsworth, a good man, came by the shop a few times. Anyway, he went down into that mine, stayed down there for 10 days. When he came back up, he was uh, changed. They say he was like a feral animal, rabid and carnivorous. His mind was gone, his flesh all sallow and bloody, his eyes ablaze in a, a red light. The first home he stumbled upon was me and Ma's. I was at the shop at the time. Ma went out to meet him and Clive, he... Doc said it happened quick. Clive jumped on her, ripped her throat. Old Bill ran over, put two through Clive's skull, shot him dead, like a dog. But Ma, she's been laid to rest now. She'll rise up to heaven, and bless her soul, she'll be greeted with open arms. That mine, they've been digging for that blue rock. Some folks say you stare too long, you'll find the devil in it. I need answers. I need to understand what happened. I'll head down to that mine tomorrow. The day's the 19th of April, the year of our Lord, 1885, somehow. I don't know how it's possible. Last I recall, I was headed into the mine. I swear, I was only down there for a few hours. But I come back up. Townsfolk say I've been missing for five days. Then there was last night. When I slept, I had a vision. Two angels came down to me from heaven. They told me I needed to be ready to prepare for what was coming. And what was coming, they would not tell me, but how to prepare. Build a machine, they said. A machine that will grant you great power. Now, this machine was complex, requiring craftsmanship and mechanical skill I did not have. I told them such, but they said not to worry. They would guide my hands. The way they described it, it sounded like a, an oven or a kiln. You stick your rifle inside, and when it come back out, <laughs> Well, let's just say that rifle would pack a serious punch. The day's the 30th of June, the year of our Lord, 1885. My invention is the talk of the town. People been coming from far and wide, eager for a chance to upgrade their firearm. Revolver, rifle, the machine don't care. It'll pack them all. I pray every night, thanking the heavens for sending them two angels. I couldn't have done this without their guiding hand. They returned to me last night. They told me there was another machine they wished me to build. They called it the Agarthan Device. Said it had the power to grant that which one truly desires. I told them I was their servant. Show me the path and I will walk. They said I needed three things. The blood of an elder god, an elemental shard, 
and a metallic vessel to harness and carry both. To find the blood, they instructed me to travel to the bottom of the ocean. I told them this I could not do, for I would perish. To craft an elemental shard, they instructed me to forge four souls with a blue rock from our mine. I told them this I could not do, for I do not have the means to siphon a human soul to an element. But a metal vessel? Well, I am a blacksmith. That, that I think I could manage. The day's the 21st of July, the year of our Lord, 1885. I have, uh, a confession. I am burdened with sin. I fear I am the architect of my own damnation. This town, this town is cursed. The devil himself has possessed our people. Folk have been acting all kinds of crazy paranoia, visions, seeing things that ain't there. And the violence. Seven dead in the last five days. Sheriff don't know what's gotten into these people. But I know it. It's that damned mine. Them blue rocks. Doc believes them to be meteors from the sky, from up in the stars. Maybe from heaven. But whatever the cause, I fear the disease that consumes this town has gotten to me as well. Last night, I felt overcome with loss and grief. I went to see Ma at the cemetery. Maybe it was a whiskey. Maybe it was delirium, I can't say, but I uh, dug her up and uh, took her in the town. I took her to my shop where I kept the machine. I, uh, I, I don't know what came over me. Like something took control of my body like a puppet on strings. I, I put her in the machine. I don't know why, maybe, maybe it would bring her back to me. But she vanished. Nothing came back out. I stumbled home in a daze, but as I arrive, I see before my eyes, I see an apparition, a spirit. It looks just like her, only when she was younger. She floats around the house now. I catch her playing the piano. <laughs> the angels. The angels, they came back to me again. I've built the metal carriage just as they asked. Only one thing left to do now, upgrade it with my machine. The day's the 22nd of July, the year of our Lord, 1885. We are truly lost. This town, these people, we are being punished by heaven for our transgressions and now must suffer the righteous hand of retribution. I did as they asked. I put the metal vessel in the pack-a-punch machine just as instructed. Next thing I know, all the energy, all the power of the world gets sucked out of the air as if pulled inside the machine. Next thing, the world went wide. I came to, and I see that I, my shop, all the people, the whole damn town has been transported as if wheeled by the Lord into this cavern buried below the surface of the earth. I fear we are at the threshold of hell, the world just waiting to open below our feet. We've been overrun by the devil's army. The dead have risen and now do us in battle. My name is Jebediah Brown, 
and I bow humbly before the two angels and ask for forgiveness. Show us the path to salvation. We are listening. Hello? Gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to welcome you to Group 935. This is a prestigious moment in the history of our race. You represent the future of technological advancement. You are the pioneers of human discovery. In your hands lies the destiny of mankind. In our hands is a great power, and with that power comes a price. You have volunteered to be part of this great experiment, and with that decision comes the responsibility of absolute secrecy. No one is to know what you do, where you work, what our research has uncovered, or what our purpose will be. You will have no further contact with your governments or with your families. Your decision to fully dedicate your lives to Group 935 is absolute. In your lockers, you will find your field ops manual, which will direct you should our manifesto get compromised. We cannot afford to let this power fall into the wrong hands, and therefore, the field ops manual should be considered your Bible. Make your preparations now. A new dawn is beginning for mankind. Initiating test number three. Subject is within the test chamber. Activate power. Oh, oh my god. Can you hold yourself and clean that up? Test number three. Unsuccessful. Test subject has been reduced to the same state as previous subjects. Clean up the test chamber and recalibrate the system. Let's do it again. Yes, doctor. Now, you must be very diligent, Miss Sir Samantha. Owning a dog is a great responsibility. Yes, Father. Oh, I love her. You must feed her every day and walk her and be very careful when you play with her. You know she's going to have puppies. Really? Can I keep the puppies too, Father? We'll see, Samantha. One step at a time. Log entry 38. Date. December 4, 1939. The matter transference prototype is prepared for test run number 151. We have now reduced our test subject's mass to prove that this is possible. Dr. Schuster, please give an overview. Yes, Dr. Richthofen. We have the new test subject, a walnut, weighing in at 10 grams. The target platform is now at 3 feet with no obstructions. We have one microgram of the element which, according to our calculations, will be entirely used up during tests. Excellent, Dr. Schuster. Commence test number 151. Yes, Doctor. Uh, please, insert your earplugs. Good God! We've done it! We have powered up the prototype and have moved a walnut directly from the prototype device into the receiving device. It moved instantly. It... it... Teleported. Get me Dr. Maxis immediately. But this is not the crucial experiment that you are supposed to be working on. With all due respect, Dr. Maxis, this is a breakthrough of unimaginable proportions. What? That you moved a wall not a few feet? Yes, Edward. We will improve the human condition by revolutionizing the walnut industry. I can see it now. Edward's walnut delivery. Don't be obtuse. How dare you call me that? We are at war, Edward. I will admit that there is promise here. But until this war is won... Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Maxis. But Group 935 is a research organization. What was the motto? To improve the human condition? What business of ours is this war? Fine, Dr. Richthofen. I will let you in on a little administrative secret. 
We are finalizing a deal with the Nazi party. We need funding. We need equipment. They need new weapons. Chances are this war will end soon with a treaty or two, and we will be in a much better position to help the world. Are you certain this won't cause massive defections? We have scientists from all over the world working with us. That is why it is with the utmost confidence that I share this with you. No one will know of this. This is simply the breaking of an egg to make an omelette. Think of the tactical advantage we would have. Think of the cost. Think of the time. We can provide the Nazis technical expertise in various areas without putting all our eggs in your walnut basket. Good day, Edvard, and get back to your real work. Bloody jerk. I think Dr. Maxis has lost his perspective. No matter. We'll do this on our own and publish the findings before he has a chance to. You're not suggesting that Dr. Maxis would steal this technology and perfect it without us, are you? I would by no means discourage that thought. Great scientists must stick together and achieve great science. Entry 42. Date, January 4, 1940. Dr. Schuster and I, despite mounting pressure from Dr. Maxis, have continued working on the matter transference prototype. We have made great strides in the last 30 days and are ready for our first human subject. If our calculations are correct, we will send a test subject, me, to the receptacle station sitting 30 yards away and behind a cinder block wall. Are you certain you want to do this, Dr. Richthofen? Nein, Dr. Schuster. But this must be done. Quickly, put in your earplugs and power up the machine. in the ceiling of the chamber, but there are no obvious connections to anything electrical. What is this place? Dr. Schuster? Is that you? Dr. Schuster? Look at this. It appears to be covered in some kind of hieroglyphic language. I've not seen anything like it before. Why are you whispering to me? There's no need for that. Lost is lost. Do you hear that? My God! What happened? I seem to be in some kind of jungle. I can't be certain of where I am. Org entry 43. Date, January 23rd, 1940. I cannot be certain what happened to Dr. Richthofen once the test was commenced. He just disappeared from the machine into thin air. I have searched the area for days and have no evidence that he is anywhere. I am afraid I might have to scrap the... Don't scrap anything. We've done something. Something wondrous. Do you hear them? Dr. Richthofen, you're alive. I'm more than alive, Mr. Schuster. Is the device still intact? Yes, but what happened to you? Ah, oh, something wonderful. That chamber was incredible. The wonders we can learn. What are you talking about? Are you all right? Get in the matter transference prototype, Dr. Schuster. 
We have worked. Gentlemen, for two long years we have toiled here and at Eagle's Nest to build our fortifications. For two long years we have taken equipment to build up our labs. For two long years we have worked under Group 935, believing that Dr. Maxis truly wants to help the world. For two long years, we've led a double life. Today, that all ends. I bring to you what this project is all about. What I have worked to keep from my enemy. What is it, Dr. Richter? It looks alien. It is an ancient drill machine. And you, Dr. Brock, are now the lead scientist here at Griffin Station. You will be the one to discover how it works. We first must discover what it does. Nein, Dr. Kroll. I know what it does. It has a direct connection to another dimension. Let us see. Preposterous. No more preposterous than teleporting all of this gear to the moon or to building Griffin Station. Is it? I suppose not. How do you know what it does? I have found many interesting real artifacts here. I have decoded some of their language. All signs point to this device being a stable gateway to the ether. Dr. Richthofen, I'm aware of a project being run by Dr. Maxis at Derice concerning Brill. As am I. I am going back to my post at Group 935 to continue the charade. I will be finding out just how much information Dr. Maxis has on Brill. Once the machine is operational, I will enact my plan on return. Gentlemen, let the games begin. Shh! This is so loud! Edward, tie the damn thing down! We can't have it running around during the test! It's tied down now, Dr. Maxis. Initiating test number five. Subject is within the test chamber. Activate power. Searching for Vitus. No reading, Doctor. The subject has disappeared. Dr. Maxis, we've done it! Don't be foolish! Test number five is unsuccessful. Subject has vanished, yes, but has not reappeared at the mainframe. Recalibrate the damn system! Now! Stand up. Stand up! Good. Look at me. Over here! Good. Now walk forward. Excellent! Further. Keep coming. It's all right. Stay there. Calm down. Yes. I order you. Yes. Kill it. Bring me another. Sophia, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen, it is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the giant project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditure so early in our development. As you know, early tests on the DG2 have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass-producing the Wunderwaffe within the next few years. Work on the matter transference has, however, come to a standstill. We simply do not have enough Element 115 to continue the experiments. The test subjects have survived the teleportation, but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled. If we are to overcome this obstacle, we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment. To this end, I suggest we find not only a regular supply of 115, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the U.S. has a large supply of the element at the Nevada base. So time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them.
This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion on the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with the work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Maxis. Mr. Log, 1075. Dr. Schuster and I have spent countless hours with the pyramid device in an attempt to understand how it functions. We have made little progress until now. Today, we uncovered what looks to be some kind of tank with a glass-like front. The glass itself seems... I've got you now, Rat. Kill it, Schuster. <laughs> Did you see that? Look, the capacitor is illuminated. The tank is filling. The machine. It seems to be activated. What did you do? I think we just discovered what powers this machine. This is Eagle's Nest. Status update. Over. Hello, Doctor. We have the shipment and are carrying out your orders. It's great work, Doctor. All in the name of science, Dr. Graf. Continue until the tanks are full. Yes. Initiating test number six. Subject is within test chamber. Activate power. Damn it, Edward! Did you set up the device correctly? Yes, Doctor. As per your specifications. If you had done it to my specifications, then it would have worked, wouldn't it? As usual, your incompetence has... What? Do you hear that, Doctor? Part you fool! Test number six is a failure. But the experiment has caused some kind of electrical force to energize within the chamber. Well, open the door! Doctor, I don't think... Open the door! Now! Daddy, what are you doing with Ross? Damn it, Samantha! I told you never to come in here! Edward, get her out of here! Yes, Doctor. What's wrong with her? Daddy, what did you do? Come back here! Samantha! Stop her! Easy! Come here, Samantha. Good girl, Rossi. Gently, Samantha. That's not Rossi anymore. We must get out of here. What? Edward, what are you doing? Open the door! Edward, open this door now! <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> Mr. Schuster, report. The tanks are full and the shields are down. The machine is humming nicely. Good. And what of the shipment? Most are buried outside of the base. The live ones we've sent back to Kustva Postum. Excellent. There is nothing left but to wait for Dr. Richthofen's return. Perhaps this is a good time to work on my low-gravity putting in the biodome. Yes, a little leisure time would. Intruder detected. Receiving bay. This is not a drill. Security, report. This is not a Can you repeat? She's coming right toward us. Get her! Get back here! Nay, do not let her! Damn it! Dr. Schuster, find a way to get her out of the pyramid. I will contact Edna and let him know there has been an incident. How did she end up there? No matter. I know what must be done. In the meantime, see if you can find Dr. Magnus. Perhaps he can talk some sense into her. Did you not deal with him already? Yes. But if the child ends up there, then Magnus must be somewhere too. Find him. How do you propose? Dr. Groth, I cannot do everything for you. I leave this in your capable hands. 
hands. There is much to be done. Yes, Doctor. Oh, and Groth? Yes. I keep an eye out for an evil-looking dog while you're at it. Log entry 937. Date May 15th, 1942. Dear Diary, our men have safely returned from Africa, where they recovered a number of artifacts buried underground in some sort of subterranean cowboy village. Apparently it was American. That's right, an American cowboy western town buried underground in Africa. Stupid American schwein. Is their apple pie and their base bulls are thinking they can just waltz into another country and claim it as theirs? There is no art to their work! <sighs> but I digress. The boys have returned with a number of fascinating articles and documents. They have pieces from a destroyed machine called the Pack a Punch. With a name as clever as that, it must be American. I have given the schematics to Dr. Porter. Perhaps he will have better luck replicating Jebediah Brown's work. Speaking of that blacksmith, we also recovered plans for the Agathon device. It seems that the blacksmith already built one of the pieces, the fabled Vril vessel. The Agathon device, a device capable of granting that which one desires, almost like own genie in a bottle. I think I shall keep this genie in my back pocket. If my plan fails, and it won't, perhaps this device can get me to Agatha. Log entry 1438, date July 18th, 1945. Dear Diary, I have been at Group 935's Siberian facility now for nearly days, but my cup already run us over with exciting news. First, yesterday, I learned that I would receive not one, not two, but three test subjects. Ah, hopefully with proper 115 injections, we will be able to use these specimens to access the human mind. The Chancellor's undead army is on standby until we crack this crucial step. And secondly, here he is, Rick Hoffman. Get your damn hands off me. Now what do we have here? A spy? If you know what's good for you, you'd let me go. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you work with someone incredibly important. Honestly, you have no idea. How did you find my secret facility? Who are you? I'm a reporter. I was hired by a man, Mr. Rapt. I never met him. He asked me to find some goods for him. Things he wanted badly. Sounds thrilling. And what were these goods he wanted so badly? <sighs> Look, I don't know the specifics. He just told me to travel to Russia. He gave me these coordinates, which led me here. How was I supposed to know it was a freaking German base? He gave some vague description of a strange metal object. This, I assume? Yeah, that'll be it. Called it the Seal of Duality, whatever the hell that means. Well, the Vril Vessel is not for sale, and is certainly not for stealing. But it is curious. I have only just arrived at this facility, bringing the Vril Vessel with me, yet you somehow knew it would be here. How is this possible? How the hell am I supposed to know? I just go where the Shadow Man says to go, I don't know how he does it. Listen, if Mr. Rapp wants to find you, he's got his ways. Look, you want to go ahead and get this over with? If you're going to kill me, kill me. Not like it'll matter. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know? Something Mr. Rapp said. About if I failed him and died, it'd be okay. He said he'd reach out to me all over the multiverse, whatever that means. I didn't pay it no mind then, but maybe some other me is out there having a lot better luck than I am. Sir, what should we do? Take the strange, sad, riddle man away. Find a hole. Log entry 1469, date August 28th, 1945. 
Dear Diary, Progress continues on unlocking the human mind. If Germany hopes to continue their war, they need an undead army willing to obey orders. There's also been further interest in the Super Soldat program. The German Chancellor considers this of high interest. We have begun the cloning process. We will have to see what results we yield. Test subject N3WB has been vomiting for two days straight. Our poor janitor. He has nightmares. Needless to say, we will no longer be serving fish. The Russian subject continues to be unresponsive. Dr. Yina suggested a serum made of vodka, but considering my concerns about his loyalty, I wonder if this is perhaps another attempt at sabotage. The specimen from Mexico continues to rant incoherently about giant monsters on some uber-fun war. Perhaps we were a little too eager with his 115 injections. I did not think he would go this crazy so quickly. Ah, <sighs> if I'm being honest, I'm beginning to find this work a little drab and boring. Undead army, super soldat programs. <sighs> Group 935's deal with Germany has truly limited the organization's potential. The appearance of the spy last month has inspired me to review the blacksmith's schematics, the Garthen device and its three components, the Vril Vessel, the Apothecon Blood, and the Elemental Shard. The instructions to creating the Elemental Shard have my interest piqued. Four human souls merged with Element 115. Not that I'm trying to brag, but this may be something in my wheelhouse. Scalpel, please, Dr. Yee. Scalpel, Dr. Richter What exactly are you looking for, Dr. Richter We are attempting to locate an appropriate stimuli that will trigger the brain's involuntary willingness to obey command. Ah, there we are. Forceps, Dr. Yee, if you please. Forceps, Dr. Richter But the liver and kidneys. Or the spleen? Our goal is to unlock the barrier to the human mind. With element 115, it is important that we explore every possibility. The barrier may be where we least expect it. There we are. Retractors. Retractors? It seems the Chancellor has been pushing us harder these last days. Is this because of the spy that was discovered at the asylum? I do not know, Dr. Ina. Our German leader, along with Dr. Maxis, is so limited in his thinking. His goals are simple-minded, childish. He keeps pushing for his undead army when he could have the elemental shard. The elemental shard? A device capable of endless energy. We could use it to craft anything, including an Agarthen device of immense power. Hold this open while I grab the injector. A Garthen device? Why haven't I heard about this? Dr. Yina, do you have a firm grip? You are shaking. I'm ready. Please, proceed. Injecting serum in three, two, one. Hold it open. The injection is nearly complete. <laughs> I can't hold this grip. <laughs> Well, I guess the barrier isn't in his spleen. Nincompoop! You did this. I knew it! You let go on purpose! Richterman, it was an accident. My, my hand slipped. Don't go! Oh, there. The Russian subject recently began responding to stimuli, but only after injecting him with a new serum made primarily from vodka. Perhaps this is a breakthrough in the experiment we have been waiting for. Perhaps I was too harsh on Dr. Yina. It was he, after all, who suggested the vodka serum. Credit where credit is due. Today, Olsen marks a great success for one of my side projects. Using a processed rock of element 115 and the Vril vessel, I was able to successfully siphon a piece of the souls from our three specimens and inject them into the rock. Without access to a fourth individual, I used part of my own essence. 
Much to my surprise, the rock grew and transformed, creating a beautiful shard of glass made purely from element 115 and parts from four human souls. The real vessel, the elemental shard. All we need now is the apothecon blood, and the Agathan device shall be complete. End log entry 1474. Or should I say 1474? Doesn't matter. Log entry 1471. Date September 2nd, 1845. Dying. Another day, another fair. This time, subject N3WP just blankly at the floor. The Russian subject still smells like urine, even after he was given a bath and deloused twice. And I think I might have killed the specimen from Mexico. His spleen is on the floor and he's not moving anymore. I can verify with certainty, however, that the barrier is not located in the spleen. Dr. Ma continue no matter the cost. I wonder what he might think of the experiment, the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Drop that! That's my sleep! My! Log entry 1472. Date. September 10th, 1945. Dear diary, today was a good day. The swelling has subsided. The ice helps. They made liverwurst for lunch. It was... I still have not had any luck reprogramming any of the live specimens. Dr. Ma the key to unlocking the human mind will be more easily discovered on someone who isn't dead yet. I am not convinced. The army is stored until I can break this, this trust barrier. Oh, apparently someone in security found a spy in the group. They are delivering him from Brooklyn. The place of one that I broke. <laughs> oh. Log entry 1473. Date, September 17th, 1945. Dear Diary, today... These hands off me, damn dirty Nazi. Uh-oh, it doesn't look good. Yeah, that's right. You want some of this? I'm taking you home in bags. Freak. Nine, I don't think so, America. Okay, now... I suppose this must be the replacement specimen. Time to get to work. I can still hear you. Hit him again with the stick! Log entry 1474. Date, September 20th, 1945. Dear Diary, It would seem that the OSS realized that we captured one of their spies. They tried to send a rescue team into Verut. That was awesome. First batch of ten subjects. <laughs> I suspect there are other moles in the organization. Dr. Harvey Ena and Dr. Peter McKay, to be precise. Dr. Matthews include any Americans in Group 935, no matter how much genius they held. Stupid Americans, they say. Apple pies and baseball and children. But I digress. The new American test subject is interesting. What muscle? His intellect seems low, but his will is strong. Like the others, he doesn't seem to know who he is anymore. Unlike the others, he keeps breaking the restraints and killing at me. Test subject N3WB is still staring at the floor, muttering what sounds like some kind of proverb over and over again. I think his mind may have been destroyed by the process. Oh well. The Russian subject recently began responding to stimuli, but only after injecting him with a new serum made primarily from water. Perhaps this is a breakthrough we've been waiting for. Log entry 1475, date October 1st, 1945. Dear Diary, as for the control group test, they have been put on hold. Recently, I discovered that Dr. Mass does not plan mass producing the DG2 as he for he would. If he won't move those plans forward, then I will continue following his dream of an undead army. He doesn't deserve his perch of power. He doesn't know what to do with it. I know just what to do with him. And I'll take care of that little brat if I get the chance to. You cannot do this. You have no authority. You've left me no choice, Dr. Richtofen. You used 935 resources to work on personal projects. You've been threatening the employees, myself included, 
And you're clearly suffering from excessive 115 induced delusions. Suffering from excessive 115 induced delusions? How dare you accuse me of such, such, such vile lies! Dr. Maxis has ordered the Elemental Shard to be sent to Division 9, where they are better equipped to study it appropriately. You are to cease experimentation on the test subjects and put them on ice. You are to return with them to Darius and meet with Dr. Maxis. He would like to discuss your dedication to the cause. My dedication? All of my projects, my programs, you think I'm not dedicated? You have taken everything from me. Oh, well, I still have the DG2 in active development. I suppose that's something. Actually, no. I'm afraid Dr. Maxis has canceled its mass production as well. Scheiße! This, this is all you're doing. You are intentionally sowing discontent. You are trying to destroy us from within. You, you're working for the Americans, aren't you? You're a spy. They're just like Dr. Peter McCain. Dr. Maxis will never have hired Americans, no matter how much genius they have. No, Dr. Richterfin, that's your paranoia talking. You've been exposed to Element 115 for too long. I'm just a loyal servant to Group 935 trying to protect its interests. Now, if you have any issues, I suggest bringing them up with Dr. Maxis. Oh, don't you worry, little lying apple pie brain, Hyena. I intend to bring up a great many things with Dr. Maxis. I hope this works. Shoot them. Power it up. System nominal. Accessing the device. Interface via MTD active. Accessing MTD. MTD integrity check nominal. Awaiting input. Excellent. Bring the sample. Analyzing MTD. Creating profile. Profile created. Excellent. Now, scan for target. Yes, Doctor. Target located. Bring him here. Immediately. Designated 